Okay. Okay. Uh oh. Rick, I don't, I turn my camera on, but I don't see myself. You do? Okay. Thank you so much, uh, TJ. Good morning. The October 6, 2020th meeting, uh, October 6, 2020 meeting of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners will come to order in light of the coronavirus pandemic. This meeting is built in being held virtually under the Open Meeting uh, Act. Uh, Board of Commissioners, as we noted in our work session on yesterday, uh, Governor Kemp's uh, emergency uh, executive orders still remain in place until uh, our situation and adhere to all precautionary measures to reduce the community spread of this unpredictable virus. Board of Commissioners, please allow me to start with roll call first. Please acknowledge your presence, uh, your presence accordingly. District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. President accounted for. District 2 and Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson. Present. District 3 Commissioner Cherini Carthen. Present. District 4 Commissioner Ann Guider. Present. And Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman. Present. We all are present and accounted for. This morning, we are pleased to have with us our communications director, Rick Martin, who will lead us uh, in our invocation and board of commissioners after the invocation. And we, when we uh, finished our invocation, I ask that you recite the pledge to the flag in unison's, unison. Um, I yield to you, Rick Martin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Good morning, board of commissioners and staff. If you may bow our heads, please. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and the privilege to pray. I pray for the constant protection of our Board of Commissioners, our other elected officials, and our first responders, our staff and citizens of Douglas County as well. As we are gathered this morning, <coughs> some isolated and apart, I pray that we see the positives in life. I pray for good health and wisdom and the ability to cope and seize your uplifting spirit despite the hard times we are facing. At this moment, I ask for you to take control and lead as you see fit. Our Heavenly Father, I overheard seven words that resonate so deeply with me this morning. Hate is heavy, but love is light. When we all communicate, I pray we all could remember that hate is heavy, but love is light. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Director Martin, for that inspirational um, invocation. Board of Commissioners, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, the of the United States, States of America yeah. and to the republic, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, and invisible, invisible, with liberty, liberty and justice and for all. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. Thank you again, Director Martin, for leading us in this invocation this, uh, with the invocation this morning. And the power of prayer is definitely uh, irrefutable. Public comment. Clerk, do we have any public comment this morning? No, ma'am. No one signed up to speak this morning. Okay. Thank you so much. With that being said, Board of Commissioners, we'll go right into the approval of the minutes. And I will just ask before we even dive into our meeting today, if we could just limit our comments to two to three minutes. Uh, certainly, I will allow two minutes for you to articulate any of your concerns, and then you have two minutes uh, for rebuttal. We had quite a lengthy meeting yesterday, so I'm quite sure we had an opportunity to express our concerns and to um, certainly explore and challenge some issues that we were concerned about. So with that being said, you have the minutes, uh, Board of Commissioners, you have the minutes of the commission meeting of September 15, 2020, the work session minutes of September 14, 2020, and the executive session minutes of September 14, 2020. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions that need to be made? No, ma'am. Being none, the minutes stand approved as presented. 
Board of Commissioners, we'll go right into our meeting this morning. We have proclamations. We have one proclamation where well, we have two actually. Tab number four is proclaiming November 1st, 2020 as Retired Education uh, Educators Day in Douglas County. Uh, we have Mr. John Stone. Are you here to present today? Yes, I am. All right, thank you. You have the floor, Mr. Stone. Thank you, Madam Chairman. It gives me great pleasure to be here and make this presentation and for and for the commissioners to declare this day for the retired educators in Douglas County in the state of Georgia. Whereas the governor of the state of Georgia has proclaimed the first Sunday, November the 1st, 2020 as Retired Educators Day in Georgia and whereas there are more than 121,000 retired educators in Georgia, 28,000 plus of which are members of the Georgia Retired Educators Association and whereas the retired educators of Georgia donate thousands of hours of volunteer service and make invalu invaluable contributions to the welfare of their respective communities across the state and as it is appropriate that a day be designated for citizens to express their appreciation for the contributions that retired educators have made and continue to make for the betterment of human lives and for society and whereas local churches will recognize those licensing contributions by retired educators in their community. Now, therefore, the Douglas County Board of Commissioner does hereby proclaim Sunday, November the 1st, 2020 as Retired Educators Day and calls upon the citizens of Douglas County to observe that day in appreciation, appropriate manner, honoring retired educators. So proclaim this day, sixth day of October 2020 by the uh, Douglas County Chairman, Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones and the Board of Commissioners. And it's a pleasure to make this presentation and to let you know we greatly appreciate your support of the retired educators and that the retired educators support Douglas County. And for people's information, there's a 1,060 retired educators get money every month in the, and reside in the county. Uh, and for a lot of people do not know that 89% of the people who retire as educators in Georgia remain in Georgia to give back to Georgia. And it's my pleasure to do so. And I thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Thank you so much, Mr. Stone. Uh, certainly, we appreciate all our, our retired educators and we appreciate your body of work uh, as you were the a former principal of Douglas County High School. Uh, and uh, our educators make a difference in our lives. They, uh, you, you uh, have the opportunity as retired educators, you have longevity with uh, everyone's future. Uh, you all are the ones that uh, uh, initially till the soil to allow us to, to grow plants. And, uh, to, and you really put the seeds in all the students and a lot of people that are here. So I know our physicians, our doctors, our nurses, our preachers, teachers, everyone that are, are certainly experiencing a time such as this, they, they uh, stand on your shoulders as retired educators. So I cannot say enough about uh, what all the work that you all have done to make all of us great. So I really appreciate our retired ed educators here in Douglas County. And thank you, Mr. Stone, for reading uh, such a wonderful proclamation. And it is really meant from the hearts of the Board of Commissioners. Board of Commissioners, you have heard the proclamation. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please, when I call your name, indicate your response. Uh, District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Yes. District 2 and Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson. Yes. District 3 Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Yes. District 4 Commissioner Ann Guider. Yes. And Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman. Yes, we have a 5 0 unanimous vote in the motion carries. Again, congratulations, Mr. Stone. And please uh, allow all the educators, you say there's quite a few edu uh, retired educators here in Douglas County. Let them know that the Board of Commissioners sent our highest regards and respect for what they have done to pave the way here in Douglas County. All right, we'll move on to tab number five. Tab number five is uh, proclaiming the Slater Mill Plantation subdivision 
of the 2020 HOA Community of the Year for District 2 in Douglas County. We have our legislative aid uh, for uh, Commissioner Robinson, who's the Commissioner of District 2, to present this uh, proclamation this morning. Good morning. Good, good, good morning, Madam Chair. I'm going to frame this first. If, if not, if uh, oh, absolutely. Commissioner. Vice I, I Chairman, you, you, have, you have the okay. floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for our citizens, um, from the very beginning when I took an office, I've always uh, believed in and supported um, engaging citizens. And the, and the primary vehicle I use is what's called a town hall. That's that one to one high touch. And out of those town halls, which I can have multiple per year, is I gain a lot of information. And this is my formal vehicle. So out of those came things such as our, our, our bus and transit, which came out of that is what I'm gonna call paving for roads. Out of that came mental health. Out of that came slum and blight. Um, out of my town halls came the SPLOS. Um, for me, the district too, it's worked quite well. And over the course of time, how I do that, either I host them individually, um, at Citizens Hall, at Deer Lake, and sometimes I'm being invited out to citizens to their HO meetings. And it's in that, that, that meeting where you really get to see how citizens work together. They show great models, some doing better than others, but what I've noticed is that they really care. As you know, an HOA is almost like a, a board of commissioners, almost like a city council. They have their own covenant, um, just like we have our constitution. Um, and it's one of those where it's, it's, it's so, it's a privilege to be before them. But every now and then I come across an HOA that is, is, is efficient. I mean, it runs almost, I would say, better than Board of Commissioners. I mean, just, just the, the, the camaraderie, just the efficiency. And it's one of those, like, that's what I'm talking about. And for that, for the past couple of years, I've been noticing those citizens that um, do very well from an HOA perspective. And so I'm using this as a platform just to highlight those that I think that now that's how you do that. That's how y'all get together. I'm talking about from a diversity perspective, from a content perspective, even in their discourse and their discussions, even when they disagree, it's just, it's so on point. They have their transparency as it relates to their records, their meetings, um, just something that like, there you go. That's how you do that. So this year, um, I'm highlighting Slater Mill uh, Plantation as my HOA of the year for District 2. I've got over 50 communities that have subdivisions within District 2, and this is just one of them. And I'm sure there are others that I've yet to meet and others that I've had visited. But this year, we're going to highlight Slater Mill Foundation, uh, Plantation as our HO of the year. And with that, Madam Chair, I'm going to yield the floor to Ruben Tillman, uh, my legislative aide who I'm introducing, and he's going to go ahead and read the proclamation at your request, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. If you could please proceed with the uh, proclamation um, legislative aide, um, Ruben Tillman. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair and BOC, and uh, well said, Vice Chairman Robinson. I have here in front of me uh, the, the proclamation proclaiming Slater Mill Plantation the 2020 HOA Community of the Year for District 2 in Douglas County, and it reads as thus. Whereas the constituents of Slater Mill Plantation subdivision stand firmly committed to promoting selfless service and unity amongst their neighbors, and whereas Slater Mill Plantation subdivision has provided significant leadership in the area of community involvement, grounded in the principle that unity is key to the community's well-being and long-term quality of life. And whereas the Homeowners Association for the Slater Mill subdivision have done an exceptional job in the cultivation of harmony within the neighborhood. Therefore, be it proclaimed that the Douglas County Board of Commissioners declare the Slater Mill Plantation subdivision the 2020 HOA Community of the Year for District 2 and Douglas County. And be it further proclaimed that this body enthusiastically endorses Slater Mill Plantation subdivision and encourages all communities to engage in programs and activities to help promote unity and diversity within Douglas County. So proclaimed this sixth day of October, 2020. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Legislative Aid um, Tillman. Great job, and that is so true about uh, Slater Mill um, Plantation subdivision had an opportunity to visit this uh, subdivision and I'm telling you they're doing some great things and they actually, it is so true that they stand committed for selfless service. So uh, job well done uh, and congratulations to Slater Mill Plantation subdivision. With that being said, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve this proclamation? So moved. 
Second. Okay, we have a motion. And who's the second? I want to make sure, uh, clerk, you have. I had heard two seconds. I heard you, Commissioner Carthen, first. So I'll go with you as the second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please, when I call your district, please uh, provide your response. Commissioner Mitchell, Henry Mitchell III, District 1. Yes. District 2 and Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson. Yes. District 3, Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Yes. District 4, Commissioner Ann jones Guider. Yes. And Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, Ramona Jackson-Jones, the answer, my response is yes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. So congratulations, Slater Mill Plantation Subdivision on this wonderful achievement as Community uh, of the Year for District 2. We're going to move on to our new business items. Uh, Board of Commissioners, we have tab number six, which is appointment of Richard Jones to the, to the Cemetery Preservation Commission effective immediately. Um, do we have a motion to approve, Board of Commissioners? I'll move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second, please. When I call your name, just cast your votes accordingly. Uh, District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell, the third. Yes. District 2 and Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson. Yes. District 3, Terenia Carthen. Yes. District 4, Ann Guider. Yes. And Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman. Yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote. Board of Commissioners tab number seven, we're moving on to the appointment of Martin Raxton to the Board of Assessors effective immediately. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please, when I call your name, cast your votes I'm sorry, accordingly. Ma'am? Yes. I had my hand up. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Commissioner yes. Guider for discussion. I'd like to make a statement, please. Oh, yes, uh, ma'am. Today's decision to replace a recently appointed member of the Board of Commissioners was nothing short of irresponsible and full of prejudice. While both candidates were equally qualified, the outgoing member was just appointed this year <clears throat> to fill an unexpired term for someone, had already taken hours of training, and the county had paid out several hundred dollars ought to be, re be repeated now to train this new gentleman. But never mind, it's only taxpayer dollars. We should all be appalled at the inexcusable manner in which this county has treated a very qualified, highly educated Caucasian woman who was willing to serve the county in this position. And I extend my sincere apologies to her. And I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Any other discussion from the Board of Commissioners before I go on? Okay, we have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please cast your votes accordingly. District 1, Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Yes. District 2, Commissioner and Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson. Yes. District 3, Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Yes. District 4, Commissioner Ann Guider. No. Okay. And Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, Ramona Jackson Jones, yes. We have a 4 1 vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much. We're going to move on to our next item, which is tab number 8 reappointment of Sandra Ferguson to the Board of Assessors effective immediately. Board of Commissioners, she was just recently appointed as well, and we reappointed her. So, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please proceed accordingly. Uh, district 1, Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Yes. District 2, Commissioner and Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson. Yes. Okay, District 3, Commissioner. Um, Terenia Carthen, I apologize. Yes. <laughs> District 4, Commissioner Ann jones Guider. Yes. Okay. And Ramona Jackson-Jones, the Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, the response is yes. 
Okay, we're going to move on to tab number nine, reappointment of Brittany Keith to the Behavioral Health and Development Disabilities Board effective immediately. I make a special note, this is another reappointment, so we are fair and square when we make a, appointments here, but these our board appointments are not set in stone or etched in stone. I want to make that known to the public that uh, certainly this is a democracy and we certainly can, uh, we want all our citizens to have an opportunity to serve. With that being said, Board of Commissioners, we have a reappointment of Brittany Keith to the Behavioral Health and Development of Disabilities Board effective immediately. Do we have an, uh, a motion to approve? So Okay, I heard so moved. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Okay, let's go. Um, District 1, if you could provide a response. Commissioner? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3, Commissioner? Yes. District 4, Commissioner? <laughs> yes. Okay, and myself, the Chairman? Uh, the Board of Commissioners, uh, yes, we have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Uh, next, we have tab number 10, appointment of Dr. Kelly Dyer to the Behavior Health and Dis uh, Developmental Disability Board effective immediately. Do we have a motion to approve uh, Dr. Dyer? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Uh, District 1, Commissioner, please provide us with the response. District yes. 1. District 2. Yes. District 3. Yes. District 4. Yes. Chairman Ramona Jackson Jones. Yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, tab number 11. We have reappointment of Gary Miller and Tanya Jackson to the hospital board uh, effective immediately. Do we have a motion to reappoint Gary Miller and Tanya Jackson to the hospital board? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we have, I heard uh, <laughs> Commissioner Robinson right. first. So that's the second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay. We have a motion and a second. District 1, your response? District 1. I'll come back to, okay, District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. And I'll circle back to District 1. I'm not sure if uh, Commissioner my, Mitchell my, felt. My apologies, I was talking on mute. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. And uh, the chairman, um, yes. So we have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Next, we have tab number 12, appointment of John Stone to the Hospital Authority Board, effective immediately. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please um, acknowledge with the response. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. Okay, and Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. We're going to move on to tab number 13. Submittal of an applicant's uh, names uh, Billy Mayhew, Roscoe Sayar, Sayar, and Diane Daniel to the Hospital Authority Board for appointment. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District 1. Yes. District 2. Yes. District 3. Yes. District 4. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote. And the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, that wraps up our board appointments this morning. Thank you so much for your time and talent yesterday as we certainly have uh, selected a group of talented young men and women um, and women um, to, to lead this county forward. All right, we're going to move on to our consent agenda. And please remember, Board of Commissioners, all items are subject to final review. Um, 
I will read it accordingly. We'll start with tab number 14, authorization for Douglas County Sheriff's Office to accept the Georgia Highway Safety Grant in the amount of $300,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 15, authorization to accept a grant from the Center of Tech and Civic Life in the amount of $1,662,000. I mean, $1,662,000. $490 and amend the 2020 Board of Election and Registration Budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 17, authorization to accept a grant from the USC Schwarzenegger uh, Institute for State and Global Policy in the amount of $99,600 for the Elections Voter Registrations Department and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 17, authorization to accept the FY20 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant Program 2020 DJBX-0171 in the amount of $13,414 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 18, authorization to name the new recreation center, the Boundary Waters Activity Center as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee. Tab number 19, authorization to approve an agreement with uh, Paratorian uh, Digital for an annual su subscription starting from 11 1 2020 through uh, December 31st, 2021, for training in the amount of $21,095 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Tab number 20, authorization to amend the budget in the amount of $2,050 for the back to school drive donations. Tab number 21, authorization to approve change order number one in the amount of $27,745,000. Uh, I'm sorry, $27,745.80 on the contract with uh, CW Matthews contract, Contracting Company Incorporation for construction of the Maxim Road Congestion Mitigation and Traffic Flow Improvements Project P1001-12621 with funding to be allocated from the 2016 SPLOST funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 22, authorization to approve change order number one in the amount of 27626 dollars and 30 cents on the contract with Summit Construction and Development LLC for construction of the Baker's Bridge Sweetwater Church High Point Doris Roads intersection uh, improvement project with funding to be allocated from 2016 SPLOST funds and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 23 authorization to approve change order number one in the amount of $19,683.07 on the contract with El Seltzer uh, Construction LLC for construction of the John West and Bright Star Road intersection improvement project with funding to be allocated from, 20, from the 2016 SPLOS funds and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 24, authorization to approve a renewal franchise agreement with Comcast and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. And last but not least, tab number 25, authorization to form the Douglas County Beautification Committee. Board of Commissioners, you have, uh, that this uh, concludes our consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. <clears throat> Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Board of Commissioners, before I go any further, do we have any discussion on any particular item or number? Yes, Madam yes, Chair. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be quick. Um, there's two items I just want to make comments on. Okay. The first one is Boundary Waters Activity Center. Um, okay. Obviously, that is a, um, a SPLOS project um, that um, that's very dear to me. Um, to, to see it finally almost coming to pass. Um, we're a little bit behind, obviously, the um, the senior center uh, because of its size, roughly somewhere between 25 and 30,000 square feet. Uh, but again, um, just doubling back, um, out of um, a town hall came the need um, out in the Anawiki community 
um, that hold uh, what I want to call the southeastern corridor of the county uh, what was a need. And it was it was expressed in a town hall in which citizens says, OK, can, can we get something for ourselves? I mean, everybody doesn't play baseball. Everybody doesn't play football. Everybody doesn't play soccer. Um, and and we, we had a need for uh, an indoor facility. And I'm, I'm, I'm very proud because this is what the citizens asked for. You know, I, I take gr great pride in advocating for my interests, which is the citizens' interests. Mm -hmm. That's important. Right? Advocation to citizens' interest. And it, 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 it changes sometimes. With advocacy comes change, right? You don't have to maintain the same old football fields or the same old way of life. You can change. Employment agreements change. Contracts change. Things change. But they change for the better. They change for the intent of, of, of a better tomorrow, a greater purpose, and, and I, 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 you know, as opposed to building a, 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 a jail, you know, our purpose is, well, let's build a community center. As opposed to in, enslaving and incarcerating, let's empower, let's liberate, right? So I look forward to the programming that's going to be coming offline with this, and I'm, I'm sure that um, the Parks and Rec Committee will uh, will, will do us justice and stuff, and, and, and sort of and working with Director uh, Gary Dukes and Gary, I, I wouldn't forget you, but this is more of just a statement and stuff that I appreciate you guys picking the name that you picked, um, the Boundary Waters Activity Center, which pretty much rounds out that 500-acre um, 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 park, uh, which you want to call a mega park. It has absolutely everything, you know, uh, aquatic center, equestrian, walking trails, baseball, football, soccer. Uh, um, you know, the, the golf, golf, disc golf, and um, it, it, it just has a little bit for, for, for everybody, right? It has variety, it's diversified, and it's something that you got. You know, obviously, we, this was well before us when you guys, the citizens, asked for that park back in 2002. But it's, it is actually a privilege to watch it come to pass, um, and obviously, we look forward to that sometime next spring, uh, which is to the point. Um, next spring, it should be coming live. So I thank you for that, Madam Chair. Just that statement. I'm going to shift to the next one, which is Maxim Road. Um, the Maxim Road one dealing with um, it's a it's a task order change. Um, this too um, 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 came out um, of, of of a broader interest, uh, which is just the sidewalk extension from the top of the hill on Maxim Road all the way down to the Cobb County line. One more time, change in the midst, right in the moment. This was uh, more of a of, of an operational safety. Uh, one of uh, my citizens um, lost their life, a, a youth. Um, I'm trying to cross such a busy street. As you know, the volume that comes out, out of Cobb County onto that um, Thornton Road corridor, um, we know that's a highly trafficked area. And it was something that I appreciate the full board of commissioners when they allowed us to modify and change the SPLOS list to add this to it. It wasn't part of the original list that the county administrator had, had came up with, but it was something that, okay, but we can change. We can make amendment for greater good. Uh, but what was key, though, is that nothing is done unilaterally. Um, it, it always requires three votes. It always requires support. It always requires. So I'm, I'm always forever um, indebted in anything that goes forth. There's nothing I've ever gotten done on behalf of the citizens of District 2 without the majority of the Board of Commissioners. So I, I'm grateful for that. But hopefully that that we're, we're coming to pass. That's still a, a that sidewall project is, is is associated with the bigger, obviously, Maxim Road intersection improvement, which is going to take a minute. Ex excuse our, our our dust as they say as they work through it. But Miguel uh, Valentin, um, Director of Transportation, I want to also acknowledge you um, for for your leadership in, in that whole area, and making sure sure that comes online and working through all the uh, bureaucracy associated with that. So, Madam Chair, I just want to make those two statements on behalf of District Two and our citizens. I yield the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Robinson. Any other comments from the Board of Commissioners? OK, I just I just have one that I would like to just see if we could highlight is our uh, it's Milton Kidd on the line, tab number 15, which is the, about the Center of Tech um, and Civic Life. This grant, if you could just again, just uh, um, articulate to the citizens of Douglas County. Uh, about this grant, uh, this certainly congratulations on receiving this as you competed with other uh, counties throughout the state of Georgia for a $1.6 million grant. So if you could explain and just just give shed some light on this grant for us. And if Tiffany Stewart Stanley is available, I just ask that you be on standby. To just, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Okay. The Center for Tech and Civic Life is an organization that's committed to lifting offices, uh, elections offices at a local level and offer, that are offering innovations and tackling elections and registration issues effectively on their own. So the Center for Tech and Civic Life has chosen to partner with uh, these counties that they feel already have initiatives that are engaged around the activities of voter engagement, uh, actually modernizing the elections process and uh, essentially doing the work of elections. So they're essentially putting their money where their mouth is. This is uh, one of the largest grants that a county our size has ever uh, received, and we don't take this investment into Douglas County lightly. We understand that this investment will allow the county, even in times of budgetary constraints due to the negative impact of COVID-19, to be able to continue the good work for the citizens of Douglas County who participate in the electoral process even uh, at greater numbers, even than on a statewide level. Our participation uh, in presidential election years previously has been anywhere from the 74 percentile to the 78 percentile during a presidential election year. Those numbers are typically unreached, like I say, even on a statewide level. So this investment will allow us to continue to be at the forefront of the elections and registration process for all of Douglas County. Thank you so much, uh, Director Kidd. I appreciate that. Um, Director Stanley, are you on the line? Okay, well, we'll just move on. But anyway, I know she she had an opportunity to work with you on the with I'm sorry, Chairman to Jones. review the brand as well. So, oh, you're on the line. Okay, there yeah, you I'm are. I couldn't unmute. I'm sorry. If you could just just you had an opportunity to review the grant, you could you just rehash uh, what you discussed yesterday in our work session after you review what you spotted on the you know with the the conditions of the grant? Can you just just go and just light detail for us and yep, the citizens yeah. of Douglas County? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Jones and Board of Commissioners. So the purpose of the grant is for planning and operating a safe and secure election. Um, the funds have to be used by December 31st of this year. Um, it cannot, we can't uh, violate any laws. And then of course, it cannot decrease any funds that's already been provided to the elections department. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, and I think it'll be a great thing for the county. Okay, thank you so much. Um... External Affairs Director, and I just want to make it uh, known to the citizens, uh, External Affairs Grant Administration in this county falls under External Affairs. So she has the opportunity to review, Tiffany Stewart Stanley reviews all the grants that come through just to make sure that the conditions are within the combines of what we are uh, and, and legality purposes for this county. Um, I see you, Commissioner Carthen. I believe you have a comment this morning. Commissioner, yes, Chair, I do. Okay, Thank let you. me let me make sure Commissioner Robinson finished. Yeah, okay, it was me. Now you. Okay, I want to make sure Commissioner okay. Robinson. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, Director Kidd, I just wanted to say thank you so much, um, you and your team, uh, and uh, for for doing this, for actually having the forethought to go out and seek funds, knowing that the county uh, is up against some hard times. We're not the only county but at least we do have directors such as you who will seek other means to ensure that each one of the citizens has a fair, transparent um, election um, process here in Douglas County. Um, also, I just wanted to thank you for doing uh, my town hall, not my town hall, my um, Douglas voter County. Yes, voter information forum which is uh, tonight, um, the information that you have given us, these grants, all of this, I hope and pray that the citizens understand that we want them to come out to vote. It does not matter who you vote for. It matters that you vote. So much hinges upon these elections and the um, percentages of people who come out to these elections also lets the world know who they need to be targeting, who they need to be getting out information to, who they need to be coming out to see when these elections do arise. So again, the more people that come out to these elections, the better it really is for the county and the process as a whole. So again, I just wanna thank you for getting this grant and not only this grant, but the second grant. Uh, it just proves that you all are actually doing something and I hope that this board of commissioners continues to support you 
um, in, in the dollars and cents, but especially in supporting your efforts to go out and get grant funds because these do help the taxpayers. Thank you so much. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carton. For the commissioners, if there are no other uh, comments, we're going to proceed. We have a motion and a second on the floor. We have a motion and a second. Please, when I call your uh, district, <clears throat> please cast your vote accordingly. District 1, Commissioner? Yes. District 2, and Vice Chairman? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. Okay. And um, Chairman Ramona Jackson Jones, yes, we have a 5 0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries, and that is the approval of our, con our consent agenda. Um, Board of Commissioners, do you have any individual announcements this morning before I pivot to our Director of Communications to allow him to make a uh, brief announcement? Yes, Commissioner yes. Carthen, I see you, and I see both. I see you. I saw you first, Commissioner Carthen, and then I'll come to you, Commissioner Guider. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, again, I would like to invite all of the constituents out to tonight's early voter forum, Get Out the Vote. Uh, it will be happening um, via Zoom, so if you have not had a chance to register for that, um, you can email our office at tcarthen at co.douglas.ga.us, um, and you can also catch it on Facebook uh, live tonight. Uh, it starts at 7 p.m., and I hope to see everyone there. Thank you, Chairman Jones. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Carthen. Commissioner Guider, you have the floor. Yes, ma'am. Um, Ephesus Baptist Church will be having their drive through pantry tomorrow from 3 to 5 uh, off of Ephesus Church Road, and anyone is welcome to come. And also, um, if you will excuse me, my husband has a procedure at the hospital. <laughs> Okay. And at 12, so I must leave, and I thank you uh, for letting me um, excuse myself. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner, and take care of your husband. Thank you. Madam All Chair. right. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Mitchell, Mitchell, I hear you. Yeah. Just, just one quick question. I, I noticed, and I may have missed this, but I thought there was an item on the agenda that somehow did it get omitted or did it get moved or something in reference to the coroner and her help that she needed to kind of continue providing the services that she provides uh, to the citizens of Douglas County. So I, did I miss something or, or, cause I don't, I, or is that no, something, you, is that a question for Mark, I guess I should say? No, you, you didn't miss anything. I sent an email out this morning and the commissioner, you were on that uh, email as well. Right now we, uh, we're pushing it to the next meeting. I would love for the coroner to be here to uh, certainly present her case not only to us, but she's, you know, we all report to the citizens of Douglas County. But I believe it was just the way it was printed this morning. It's not uh, part time positions and our work with our legal department. It's really its own call positions. Well, one right. position right. is a part time position, but the other three is three. Three of the positions are just on call right. uh, in the event of an emergency. So I'm looking forward uh, to the coroner coming in on October 16th as our next meeting so we can proceed accordingly, but um, well, she could not make it this morning. So really well, let, me, let, me, let me make sure I understand though. So her request, which she, which she was here yesterday, making a request to uh, have additional help when needed. I thought that was clear unless some of the, unless my colleagues and others didn't kind of get that, but I thought that's what she stated that she was wanting this, these positions for from a part-time on-call perspective, but I'm a little confused as to what she's going to do and present the next time. Is it something different or are, you, are we expecting something different or or what? I'm, I'm a little she, confused. Yeah, okay. Well, she didn't present at all yesterday, Commissioner. That was an executive session, if you remember. It was in our executive session, so she didn't have an opportunity to present in the work session. But she has a PowerPoint that she has developed and created, and I'm looking forward to that PowerPoint on October the 16th, coming for, uh, before the Board of Commissioners and that loud, that'll be a public presentation, not uh, an executive session. So yeah, uh, that's what I'm expecting. Okay, um, so, okay. Um, so in the meanwhile, mm -hmm. between now and the next two weeks, what are we expecting as a board for her to continue providing the services that she's trying to provide with the limited amount of staff that she don't have and trying to make this, I'm, I'm a little, 
how she how we expecting her to perform to the excellence that's expected. That's a question. That's a good question, Commissioner. But uh, again, uh, I will see the coroner in two weeks. I need her here to present, and that's uh, she is an elected official just like me and you, and she need to stand before the public and uh, she need to express her need. Again, she's not here today. She was not available, and today it so it's not available on my agenda. So we, I look forward to seeing the coordinator again on the 16th, and she will she will discuss. She's been utilizing support already. She made it very clear to us yesterday that she's already utilizing some of the staff as as a backup. So we will continue to. We'll just see her in two weeks. Okay. I hope okay. I answered your question. Okay. Thank you. All right, Board of Commissioners, anybody have anything else I can move on to yeah. our, yeah. our communications Madam. director? I heard someone. Madam Chair? Mm -hmm. Vice Chairman Robinson. Oh, why not? Um, real quick, just as um, it's more of a, may I have the floor, Madam Chair? I didn't. I didn't. Yes, you do have the floor. All right, thank you. Uh, just to, to, to mark the date, um, put a pin in it on October 29th. Um, I, I'm, I, I've got a um, an event um, that this is in association with behavioral health um, month um, in Douglas County, as I, I've, I've done um, over, over recent years, is to highlight something in the community uh, regarding mental health. Um, this time, this particular um, uh, this forum will focus on our youth, those individuals between the um, ages of 18 and, and 25, are what I want to call our young adults. We're going to have a conversation with them. You know, it's it's, it's time out from from us having a bunch of talking heads and uh, and prescribing to people. It's like sometimes you have to listen. And that Generation Z, um, that, that um, the, the, the baby millennials, um, their, their views matter to me. And I just want to get their perspective on what's going on in light of the pandemic, in light of uh, protests, in light of the presidency, in light of everything that's going on. Like, okay, well, what, what, how do y'all see the world? I have a perspective, but I'm 30 years to, to, to their senior, right? But it's important that as we transition, when we swing uh, this county to the next 150 years, that that their, their voice is right there, that, that, that is marked. So for, from my perspective, I look forward to having that conversation regarding that. And of course, I'll cover some things um, in that as well in my closing comments regarding the state of the district. So again, mark the date, October 29th. It'll be, uh, the time will be set by our next meeting. I haven't um, locked that up, but I look forward to staff making sure that this is a stellar event. Uh, you the floor, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, um, Vice Chairman Robinson. Uh, Director Martin, would you please read our announcements? Chairman Jones. Okay, wait, wait, wait one minute, uh, Rick Martin. I have Commissioner Carthen. I'm so sorry. Okay, <laughs> Commissioner Carthen, please, you have another announcement. Okay, I just have one one request, and I think this is probably for uh, Director Teal. Uh, Director Teal, in regards to our uh, elected official, Renee Godwin, who's the coroner for Douglas County, can you look into ensuring that she does have some help? Uh, the reason why she came before us is because she asked for help for uh, an oversized person who was deceased and could not get that help from our, um, our fire department. And so she had to go outside to get that help. We just want to make sure that within the next two weeks, she does have the help that she needs if she runs into that again. Um, so if I could just make that request and you just have a conversation with them until we can get her back in here and she makes her presentation uh, like Chairman Jones um, expressed, we just don't want her to be put in that situation again. Uh, anyone, you know, regardless of their size, still needs to be um, taken care of and they definitely need to be um, treated with care. Um, every family member who goes through something like that, whether they're oversized or not, they still need to be treated with care and they need to, um, and there needs to be some type of dignity with that. So if you can just in, ensure that, that way I think my conscience would be clear and from what I'm hearing, uh, Commissioner Mitchell's conscience would be clear. We just wanna make sure that we're doing what we can um, and helping her to carry out her duties as an elected official. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, I've talked to the fire chief and he said, this was one instance where we were unable to help, but as far as that goes, besides this one instance, they uh -huh. have been helping and they always do. So they will continue okay. to help. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Carthen, and thank you, County Administrator. So with that being said, if there's no other discussion, we'll move on to our um, our um, announcements from Rick Martin, who is our Director of Communication. Rick Martin? Yes, ma'am. Uh, just in terms of announcements, uh, before we close, uh, one thing uh, we want to mention, uh, Monday, Monday, October 12th, uh, early voting begins at the county courthouse. Uh, details are on our website and on the Douglas County Elections and Voter Registration page as well. Uh, again, early voting begins Monday, October 12th at 8 a.m. At 8 a.m. Uh, the next announcement is there's a temporary road closure in District 2 in Lithia Springs uh, from yesterday, October 5th through the 8th early mornings. The portion of Lee Road from Vulcan Drive to South Sweetwater Road will be closed. Also, it will be closed for filming. Uh, production is underway. Um, a traffic control plan and detour routes are available on our website, CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. Uh, another thing to mention later today, if anyone hears the sound of gunshots, there's simulated gunfire in that same area. So that information also is on our website. Uh, that concludes this morning's announcements, ma'am. I yield back to you. Thank you so much, uh, Director Martin. Um, Board of Commissioners, if there's nothing else, I would just like to end, uh, certainly as I do, with a personal conversation to all the citizens of Douglas County. We, as a county and a nation, we are stressed exponentially uh, during these challenging times. Uh, hate is heavy and love is light, and I appreciate that, Director Martin, as you shared in the invocation this morning. We must learn to embrace love and love one another and unify during a time such as this. Board of Commissioners, we must, and the citizens of Doug Douglas County, we must remain vigilant with reducing the, the spread of coronavirus. I don't want us to take our eye off, this, off the ball right now because we are focusing on so many other things that are really um, taking a second seat as it, as it compares to our health. We cannot buy help. It is incumbent upon all of us to adhere to the three W's, to wash our hands repeatedly throughout the day, watch our social distancing, and wear a mask when in public. This past Friday, I um, asked the county administrator, requested him to send out a mass email on, beh on my behalf to remind and reinforce the wearing of masks in all government buildings when uh, with, except the, with uh, the exception of in your offices. Uh, a cubicle is not considered an office because it is not enclosed. So I just want you to, to remain cognizant of what needs to be done and, and need, what we need to do to protect ourselves and others during this um, virus. Uh, we must continue. Uh, I will, and I have certainly instructed the county administrator to make sure that our temperatures are still being monitored upon entering county buildings. We must uh, make sure that we have hand sanitizers throughout the entire building because that's very important because everyone needs to have somewhere to wash their hands and somehow. We are in this together. Politics, uh, it has no place in a pandemic. And it really, when you put those two together, pol politics in a pandemic is a deadly combination. Therefore, I encourage all of us to take this virus serious because if we don't take it serious, it will take us. Our new normal is abnormal and none of us have experienced anything on the magnitude of this virus. Right now, just for quantitative purposes, there are 10.7 million Americans across this nation unemployed. Over 200 million, I mean 200,000 Americans have died as a result of this deadly virus. Businesses across the globe have closed and folded quickly because of the lack of income. The, this moment has far surpassed the Great Recession. And comparatively speaking, we this is similar to a Great Depression, and not to mention the social unrest and the clabbering effects of racism that has taken a toll on our nation. I know that together we can do this. We can work together. I, I just I wish 
And if we know just despite our exhaustive challenges, I'm convinced Douglas County is one of the most res resilient counties in the nation. And at this time, I just ask that we just don't give up. Just keep fighting the good fight because this challenge is not over. This is a marathon and not a sprint. And I've said that on very numerous occasions. On October 17th, we will be celebrating 150 years in Douglas County. And I must say we look amazing for our age. But I extend profound respect and honor to those who, uh, the trailblazers who came before us, who laid the foundation and who are expecting us to carry the torch and move the county forward so we can pass the baton to the next generation. So I ask that we focus on taking care of our health at this time and also to remain cognizant of other things around us. I'm not saying to miss, dismiss everything because life cannot stop, but I just want us to be very careful about this virus. It does not discriminate at all, and I want us to take it serious. So citizens of Douglas County uh, just want to make it clear that the Board of Commissioners have your best interest at heart, and we work diligently, and we work uh, uh, in a collective manner. We may not agree on everything, but for, most, for the most part, uh, we do agree at the end of the day uh, on the right thing to, for the citizens of this county. So with no further ado, um, I, I'm so excited uh, to stand before you today and just to share and impart my heart to, to let you know that we must remain vigilant in the storm. Um, Board of Commissioners, if there's nothing else to come before us today, and thank you again, citizens of Douglas County, we will go into recess, Board of Commissioners, and we will uh, join uh, we will reconvene at 6 p.m. So thank you so much, and I'll see you at 6 p.m.